Welcome to Chemistry Online. Today we're going to talk about the ionization of molecular compounds. Now we've previously talked about water undergoing auto-ionization. When it does this, it breaks an OH bond, forms hydronium and hydroxide. Well, water can also promote ionization in other compounds containing polar covalent bonds. Let's look at hydrogen fluoride. We've seen this electrostatic potential map before. We know that this is the positive end, this is the negative end. It's a very polar molecule. If you take hydrogen fluoride and put it in water, it undergoes ionization to give hydronium and the fluoride anion. Now this reaction goes both in the forward direction and the reverse direction at the same time. As we said before, when we have a reaction that proceeds in both directions simultaneously, we call that an equilibrium and show that with a double arrow. Now in this equilibrium, what we're doing is taking hydrogen fluoride and forming hydronium. This makes hydronium or hydrogen fluoride a Bronsted acid. In the Bronsted acid base theory, a Bronsted acid is a proton donor. It donates a proton to water to make hydronium. A Bronsted base is simply a proton acceptor. In this reaction, water is the Bronsted base accepting the proton to form hydronium. Now when we talk about acids, we're going to talk about two classes, strong acids and weak acids. It basically all comes down to this equilibrium. If the rate of the forward reaction is greater than the rate of the reverse reaction, then once the concentrations here have become constant, we're going to have more hydronium and fluoride than we are HF and water. If the opposite is true, if the back reaction goes faster than the forward, then at equilibrium, we'll have more of these guys and less hydronium. In a strong acid, we have virtually 100% ionization to give hydronium. In a weak acid, we'll have very little hydronium and mostly undissociated acid. In this section, we're going to talk only about strong acids. We'll pick up weak acids when we do equilibrium. Strong acids that we commonly encounter. Hydrochloric acid, HCl plus water gives hydronium and chloride. This is nitric acid, here's a model. We're gonna break this OH bond, form hydronium and nitrate. Perchloric acid, we break this OH bond, again we get hydronium and chlorate anion. Remember that the hydrogen is transferred here as a proton, that is a hydrogen without electrons. Therefore, we, we refer to these as monoprotic acids. They donate one proton to water. Sulfuric acid is a classic example of a diprotic acid. Here we have two OH bonds. The first ionization gives us hydrogen sulfate. The second one gives us sulfate anion. Because we donate both of these hydrogens, we call this a diprotic acid. Now, in addition to the Bronsted acid base nomenclature, we also need to understand the nomenclature of a conjugate acid and its conjugate base. In this reaction, Nitric acid is going to function as the Bronsted acid. When it loses its proton, it will form its conjugate base. So here the Bronsted acid loses a proton to form its conjugate base. Going in this direction, nitrate anion is a Bronsted base. It will pick up a proton to form its conjugate acid. Let's look at this very simple set, go through these acids, and identify 
the conjugate acid and the conjugate base on this side. For our first reaction, the Bronsted acid is HCl. When it undergoes ionization, it forms its conjugate base, and that's chloride. The first ionization of sulfuric acid. The Bronsted acid is sulfuric acid, and its conjugate base is hydrogen sulfate anion. Our second ionization. Hydrogen sulfate anion is our Bronsted acid. It donates a proton, and its conjugate base is sulfate dianion. Here we have nitric acid dissolved in liquid ammonia. Now, liquid ammonia can promote ionization. It's not as good as water, but it works. Nitric acid is our Bronsted acid. Its conjugate base is nitrate anion. Let's also look at the role of ammonia here. Ammonia here is functioning as a Bronsted base that is accepting a proton. So its conjugate acid is going to be ammonium. So in our reverse reaction, our conjugate acid here is ammonium and its conjugate base is ammonia. We could do the same thing with all of these. Up here, water is the Bronsted base, its conjugate acid is hydronium, etc. Let's look at a tutorial that explores this relationship. Here we simply want to type in the structures that are missing. We're doing an ionization to form fluoride anion and hydronium. Step one. We want to look and say, if fluoride anion is being produced, what is its conjugate acid? Well, the conjugate acid simply must be fluoride with a proton. If hydronium is being produced, this is a conjugate acid. Its conjugate base over here must simply be water. Chlorate and hydronium. Well, hydronium is our Bronsted acid. This is going to function as a Bronsted base, so its conjugate acid is simply chlorate plus a proton. If hydronium is our Bronsted acid, its conjugate base is simply water. One more. Hydrogen sulfite and hydronium. Hydronium is the Bronsted acid. Hydrogen sulfite is our Bronsted base. When hydrogen sulfite accepts a proton, it will form its conjugate acid, sulfurous acid. When hydronium loses a proton, it will form its conjugate base, and that is water.